French boxes are the boxes that are used for the different subject with the activity of today. This is what we have done. So after three years using Deping Depit app, what I can see. Uh, this is not my opinion. Uh, I must admit that I have shared what we are listening to with a group of uh, friends and colleagues uh, that were working with me in my school and in other schools of Northern Italy. So we understood that involved students in learning process help them to understand, anticipate, manage you know, their tiredness and follow their own learned path, even through personalization. But about this, I think you will listen later. It's not me. Then other points that are really important for our students, they could review the path, retrieve, and also go in depth. They could remember what they have learned even if it was something that we presented a year ago, because all you put in this app is always visible, you know? So this is really, really good for the kids. Then give value to their experiences. They can documenting, and we can speak all together about a group in the class with them too. Some other things uh, that probably involve the kids that are older than mine. So we are speaking about medium school, which in Italy is something like secondary school. They can approach to study monograph, create inside, open reflection, and insert school sheet in our classes. They can share also works with their mates. All of this has been visible, modifiable, and interactive, which is really, really good, actually. Like teachers, we had many advantages, design for activities and content, managing class time in the best way. We have resources on the page of the day, so non-teaching activities are are reduced and we had also the chance to uh, see at alternate activities respecting children attention right Deput gave us also the chance like a group of teacher to teamwork the app has amplified the ability to work with multiple hands in the same path allowing the teaching teams to work synergistically Sorry for my English, maybe this pronunciation was not enough correct. So what we hope that will happen after this first part of the project, we would really love to improve the accessibility by adding copy and paste and duplicate option. We hope there is the chance to improve agility through the various level and then what comes out from these weeks in which we are working from home in remote teaching, we hope that we will be able to increase the connectivity with other platforms and enlarge the group of teachers using the app in the same school and team. Depit has also allowed us to appreciate our Spanish colleagues' work, the professionalism and colleagueship, the parents' participation that we have noticed there, and the attention to the social problems of students and their family. So we want really to thank them for their welcome when we share, you know, when we went, when we visit them. So allowed us uh, this project also to meet colleagues uh, teaching in Europe who have involved in this project, university teachers, school leaders, and technicians who have enriched our professionalism. We want to thank to all the people who have inside, who have been part of this project for share what they know and how they teach in their classes. We have really met good people, professionists, and the main uh, common point that we had together was to guarantee that all the students can have their academic success. So I thank you for listening to me. Hope to be enough uh, uh, 
good in my English and enjoy the other part of our uh, meeting. Uh, please take just a moment because probably you will see in the chat a link with a little questionnaire and we would really love if you can answer to it. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you very much, Federica. Of course, from my per perspective, your English was wonderful, so thank you. <laughs> we, should, we should ask native speakers to, to get another opinion, but thank you very much. And uh, also thank you very much for making so yeah interesting and uh, with a lot of good information. Should we take a couple of minutes to, to fill in the questionnaire? But in the meantime, um, uh, we, we will uh, let's uh, prepare or at least uh, start preparing uh, um, representative of the Crescendo network. It's another network of uh, schools uh, here in Italy. And uh, as far as I know, Giuseppina Mecozzi will, uh, will be the, the official speaker for them. And so if you want to, to, to start Giuseppina or do you think Pier Giuseppe, we should uh, give another minute for the people to, <clears throat> to answer the questionnaire? In, in the in the meantime, Giuseppina, if you want uh, to, if I guess you have some slides to to show, so if you want to start sharing your screen or your video, okay, it's possible to start. Okay, so please, when you when you are ready, uh, don't hesitate and and start. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I'm Giuseppina Mecozzi, a teacher from Istituto Comprensivo Rotella Montalto delle Marche. We have worked for three years to this app together with the Istituto Comprensivo Monte Prandone. Istituto Comprensivo Centro San Benedetto del Tronto e Istituto Comprensivo Leopardi di Grotta Mare. The topic of this presentation is how the classroom management will change student learning and interaction through the use of the DEPI tab. A simplified school plan is crucial for teachers in order to have a clear learning path to find and organize as in any content and everything our students need to reach the required competencies. The annual school plan also become visible to the students who knows the starting and finishing point of their educational path. Inside each card, they will find the description of the single activities, the objectives, the goals, and the competencies to reach at the end of the learning unit, both individually or in small groups. Students will be able to visualize a clear and well-defined school plan, becoming an active part of the learning process while uploading their work, seeing their classmates' work, and finally, learn while cooperating and collaborating. Those teachers who are always looking for innovative teaching didactic approaches, those who usually keep useful material found online or on textbooks, these teachers need a place, a comprehensive repository to be shared with colleagues, to be adapted to the class or small groups of students in the class or individual students in the same class. The app is a real big landmark, 
avoiding any waste of time and going through the folders on our desktop. Thanks to the app, the Epit app, it will have the opportunity to collaborate with other colleagues from the same class in order to suggest our students possible interdisciplinary paths, showing them how school subjects and topics converge. We can also collaborate with colleagues from other classes. Let's consider, for example, those courses in a comprehensive school where we have to meet and organize switchover activities with teachers coming from the final year class of the primary school to the starting year class of the secondary school. Most importantly, the cards containing charts, diagrams, and concept maps, as well as parts, can be shared with special support teachers who can add parallel cards designed specifically for students with difficulties. These simplified cards can also be used to revise contents by any students. The app is equally useful for our students who will be able to browse through the cards, to download the materials, to check all the resources at available links, and to upload their multimedia works, avoiding using other platforms. The possibility of being able to access the app from home has greatly helped those students with difficulties, like dyslexic students or students with special needs or with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Instead of writing down notes, they can use any simplified material already uploaded in the app. The app is well suited to cooperative and collaborative learning as students can deliver and upload the work they have done individually or in groups. In the initial stage, our teachers had to test their students' ability to learn by using the app through a self-assessment quiz in order to check if the contents proposed had been understood. After a school year of using the app, the teachers repeated the self-assessment test and found that the students had mastered the contents proposed in the app nearly twice as much. The investigation confirmed that by presenting the learning unit on the whole has encouraged the students to focus their attention on the logical connection of the didactic path, the insights proposed via multimedia like videos, thus getting a comprehensive view of the topic presented. And once the students understood the mechanism of the learning unit, they have helped by giving a substantial contribution by suggesting adjustment based on their interests. The involvement of the class in these activities has been quite high. The pupils actively participated in the learning path, becoming more responsible, helping the teachers work, because by using the cards in the app, they get to know their learning objectives and goals, and understanding better the learning process that underlines the school plan. The graphic organizer, Depit, has helped the pupils in predicting what they do and how they move inside the various cards. The most frequent students' responses were, I think I can work like this. I think it's possible to change. You could work this other way. The possibility of this new idea of working in a different way together with that of what this way of working could lead to, has, in fact, contributed a greater awareness in the learning process. They have also understood there is this opportunity to go back and forward between the contents in the cards in order to revise, learn more about what they have previously missed. Students 
can easily understand how the app works and easily capture the contents proposed to achieve competencies and the levels they get to in a general process of awareness of their own learning path. There have been moments dedicated to prediction and anticipation, guessing, moments dedicated to questioning, moments for giving responses, times for investigations, which are all part of the whole learning process. For example, my favorite part is I liked best, I'm not sure about, I didn't expect that. The card was easier or more difficult because reflecting on a given topic has been linked to what the students already knows and that he has to learn. This means that a bridge has been created between the knowledge acquired and the knowledge to be acquired also with classmates. All this has been experimented in face-to-face -face teaching situations, but the use of the debit shows its usefulness even in distance teaching situations, allowing the students to always check at which point of the planning he is, and therefore, to be able to contextualize the topic of a certain period within a wider path, which sometimes escapes the student's eye, promoting greater reflection on one's own learning. Uh, some of these considerations emerged from the comparison with other Spanish teachers during the teaching learning activities in Italy in October and in Spain in November. These experiences have been very useful, uh, very useful to know how other teachers from different countries use the app and the didactic parts. Besides, learning about the different school systems has been extremely interesting. Uh, these are the numbers of the teachers who experimented the, the, the EPITAP. From Rete Crescendo, there are 10 teachers from nursery school, 25 from primary school, and 19 from middle school. That's uh, 54 teachers. From Rete, Rete Depit, no one from nursery school, 48 for primary school, 15 from middle school, that's 63 teachers. In total, 117 teachers. This is the diagram of the, about the teachers. You can see that uh, 34 are from uh, middle school, 10 from nursery school, and 73 from primary school. Uh, now, a link will be provided in chat for a questionnaire with some quick questions. Could please fill in the questionnaire? Thank you for your attention. Thank you. <coughs> if possible to share my, uh, my screen is impossible. Uh, can, uh, can you authorize me to... Uh, con uh, you share, share my okay share okay. screen i showed the uh, results of a precedent uh, uh, questionnaire we have uh, uh, the present uh, the answer is from italy and from uh, spain uh, uh, from new zealand uh, how to use how do you design your lecture uh, 50 percent i create an articulated and well-defined structure with a list of activities to develop and only eight i carry out a wide link uh, yes i carry out a wide link of structure your design uh, 53 percent 
essential in cloud the structure of the activity activities to develop. Uh, do you use a digital uh, tool? We have uh, fifty percent yes, fifty percent no. Perfect. And this is the uh, list of uh, uh, the tool. Uh, it's possible to start for the next uh, presentation. I insert the uh, second questionnaire. If you want, I have the link ready here. I can type it in chat. Okay, you, you did it already. Wonderful. Okay, so <clears throat> same as before, if you have a couple of minutes to fill in this, uh, this second survey. And um, well, in the meantime, um, as I said in the, the beginning, this uh, project was uh, mainly focused on uh, schools from two countries, Italy and Spain. And uh, we had also different opportunities for collaboration. One of them was uh, developed uh, in October, November last year with uh, the mobility activities of teachers uh, from Spain to Italy and from Italy to Spain. Uh, it was a very successful experience for one week uh, for exchanging methods, methodologies of uh, teaching and, uh, and learning and uh, with a particular focus on the use of the, of the DEPIT uh, app. So I, we, we received also very, very enthusiastic feedback from them. And uh, this is just to introduce uh, our next speaker for the Centro de Professorado de Sevilla. And uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> it includes school from Sevilla. I don't know if uh, Beatriz uh, is, uh, is ready or Marga who are our uh, reference partners, who have been our reference partners for all the three years projects. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't meet uh, personally for the last meeting. It was a pity, but uh, we are confident that there will be other chances in the future. Yes, uh, we are ready, Roberto. We are okay. ready. <laughs> Wonderful. Just one more thing. I saw that there were uh, questions in the chat. Please keep on uh, typing your questions, then we will collect all of them and uh, we will discuss uh, about uh, these topics and trying to answer your questions during the final discussion session at the end of the workshop. Thank you. Please Thank go you. ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are Beatriz and, uh, and Marga. From, good morning. Good morning. And um, from, from Spain, from Seville. And um, well, as uh, you know, some of you know, we are um, educational advisors from the Teachers Training Center of Seville. And um, uh, we are partners in the DEPIT project. And, um, and among other tasks, uh, our institution has coordinated the experimental phase of DEPIT app in the classrooms and in the schools here in Seville. And um, we're going to talk about how personalization and inclusion will change with DEPIT. That's our topic for, for today, for this presentation. And uh, everything we're going to tell you is based on what we have discovered, what we have learned during the experimental phase with the VETITA in the schools here in, in Seville. And our presentation has three parts. And um, I will lead you through the first one, which is a brief introduction to the concepts of personalization and inclusion with VETIT. And then uh, my colleague, Marga, she's gonna uh, take you to part two and part three. And she's gonna show you how the DEPIT model supports uh, personalized and inclusive learning. And also she's gonna show you examples of how the app provides a variety of resources that really guarantees the inclusive and personalized learning. 
And um, well, we have we have chosen this this sentence is by Catherine Prince, uh, a professor at Britain's Open University, because we think that it really it really um, summarizes what we um, what we think is the goal of the DEPIT project. It says it is our ideal future that learning adapts to each child. Every child to have exactly what she or he needs at the right time to be successful. This future of learning is possible. And um, we know that schools nowadays are doing their best to implement personalized learning models to meet the needs of each student. But we are really aware that this is not an easy task. And most of the teachers struggle to meet their students' unique needs. But we, we believe, uh, we certainly believe that DEPIT, the DEPIT model helps with the task and will really contribute to make real this ideal future. Um, now about personalization. What do we understand about that on, on, on that word? What is that? What's that concept? And um, we understand that our current society is very complex and diverse. And that complexity is present in our schools and classrooms. So the teachers are required to customize their teaching in order to adapt it to their students, to their students' diversity and to boost their inclusion. And, um, but what do we really understand by personalization? It really relates to all the strategies that are performed by the teacher to respond each student need considering their personal and academic characteristics and their social, cultural and family context. Personalization in teaching improves educational inclusion and guarantees a quality education to all students on equal terms. The start point for a personalized learning must be a well-executed design of the macro and micro programming. Um, the design. Design has always been there, um, but the traditional models are, um, most of the times, they are too rigid and, and unsuitable for this complex reality. So we really have to stop doing what really doesn't work and to change into a different way of make the design. Is it possible um, to program realistic plans according to the classroom diversity? Well, um, the DEBIT project proposes a collaborative and constructive methodology that has taken into account the teacher's difficulties when programming for personalization and inclusion. And questions such as, how can I respond to the diversity of capacities within the classroom? Or can I design activities adapted to different learning rhythms incorporating different levels of difficulty. Um, we believe that DEPIDA can answer to all these questions. We have already tested it in the classrooms and we have seen it. Well, DEPIDA is, is based on these previous premises and, um, and is designed with the goal of supporting teachers with a flexible and customized design approach that promotes personalization and inclusion in education. Now, um, my, my colleague Marga will continue with the presentation. Okay, thank you Beatriz. As you know, first I will talk about the PIT model and then I will talk about the PIT app. The PIT model, as you know, is based on Diana Lovillard researches about learning process, conversational framework and teaching as a learning science. Both are focused on student needs, on what a student needs to learn. It's important to emphasize that the understanding of the model is philosophy, each which will produce significant changes on personalization and inclusion at the schools. After the pilot phase in, the, in our schools, we can state that with the adoption of the PIT model, the strategies of attention to diversity and experiment changes at many levels. Now, I will tell you these levels. It has experimented changes at local and national level, at the school context, at department grades and cycles, at classroom environment, and 
at the student's level and teacher's style. Let's start with the first. At local and national level, the PITS model allows to contextualize planning and adapt same to different European educational systems as well as to local and national educational rules. We can say that contextualization is the key for personalization because a good design must take into account languages, countries related to local environments or countries' reality. At the school context or school community, we have tested the model and application in a huge variety of schools. Um, a school with different social cultural level, a school located in small villages or in populated areas, a schools in different uh, level, like uh, from childhood to high school. And due to the diverse, the versatility of the DEPIT model, all these schools have customized the model according to their school's context and annual school projects. But in parallel, they also have changes in their traditional model of programming and the attention to diversity. Another important change at the school is relating to families. DEPIT helps getting parents involved in schools because this is a visible design and so easy to understand this enables families to become more involved in their children's learning process, which means a great external support for the improvement on inclusive itineraries and to each student's success. DEPIT also improves the e-inclusion, the digital literacy. Due to DEPIT application is public and free, it's a result that allows the school to introduce technologies into the classroom and consequently it reduced the frequent digital divides between a school in disadvantaged areas and the rest. In terms of technical capacity, DEPIT is a comprehensive approach on e-inclusion. At departmental level, the possibility of chair maps, resources and activities makes possible a collaborative work for the team teachers of, a, of Sorry, for the team of teachers that teach at the same group of students. This obviously contributes to a better personalized response and helps to make meetings, departments, and their programming more effective and inclusive. This model also facilitates the use of innovative methodologies, such as project based learning, which visualizes its students' individual skills. At classroom level, we can think it will also change the student's role in their learning process since the PT sign is very visual and easy to understand. The students can visualize at a glance a map of structure with regular planning, lesson plans, itineraries, and activities. The students will participate not only in the proposed activity, but in the design of the global process. This dialogue between with students trigger their motivation and learner autonomy. And of course, it will bring about a highly personalized learning and a better classroom atmosphere. Thanks to the explicit way of showing the lessons, students could be free, familiar with the tool. So methodologies as peer learning and flipped classrooms will be easy to adopt fostering the attention to diversity in the classroom. In the photo on the left corner, you can see a, a, a girl who is shown the example of flipping classroom with their partner. Okay, <clears throat> now at the student, at teacher level, with the picked up, we can integrate audiovisual and interactive resources to capture and maintain attention of learners. It evidently supports the inclusion of the students with attention deficit, which unfortunately is one of the most common learning disorders in children and adolescents. Now, thanks to the huge variety of resources, teachers can design many kinds of activities, reading, listening, experiments, which support different learning styles. At the pitch also has many elements, which I will detail in the last part of this presentation that fostered to the inclusion of students with different learning phases. Last but not least, I would also like to mention that teacher personalization, I mean, teacher's professional styles. 
thanks to the multimodality of the method, teachers have a tool that allows to customize learning according to their professional style or management strategies. Well, the second part is focused on the app elements that facilitate personalization and inclusion. These elements have been greatly appreciated for the teachers during the app implementation phase. The first element is the organization of the designs in different levels of curricular concretion. Is, is this the way? In this way, the designs are sequentially organized by using folders and cards of different scholars. We have an example of annual programming of technologies in a high secondary education school. Here we can see how easy it is for the students to follow the structure. In the next slide, we can observe another annual planning now in a conceptual map view. A student are easily aware of the meaning and intention of the global process, and this will improve a student's commitment. Another element is the variety of resources that they have below, like text and audios. In these slides, we can observe that teacher has introduced a test of a fairy tale with the audio to listen to it. Very useful for visual impaired students. And other resources like images, videos, itineraries, links, videos, and documents. These uh, elements improve the understanding of information by students and using the better resource adapted to their needs or learning style. Moreover, a library of exciting maps and resources is currently in process. In this, there will be resources adapted to a student with a special needs as well as reinforces or extra activities. Other element is that teachers can assign different levels of difficulty to propose activity. Quickly and visible through the colors and points codes, so each task can be classified according to its difficult in high, medium, and low. In this photo, we have two examples of activities. You can see at the top right corner the points and colors that indicate the level of difficulty. Furthermore, teachers can design different itineraries. In this way, it's a guarantee that each student can maintain their own learning phase. To show different educational itineraries, the teacher will use arrows of different colors. We have some examples. In the first one, you can see an annual plan with different itineraries, different color arrows, developed to personal, personalized path we can see that the student can follow them easily. In the second one, we can see the activities proposed for the fairy tale reading, which I showed you before. Note that we can see both itineraries and activities with different levels of difficulty. Teachers involved in the PIT project have especially appreciated the possibility of creating paths of personalization in parallel to the main one. Then we have another example. So uh, finally, a strong characteristic of the app is that allows to redesign in real time. Depending on the need of the moment and a student's feedback, it is a guarantee that inclusion and personalization are taking place. So as a synthesis, after the first approach to educational centers, it has been proved that the PITAP facilitates personalization and inclusion in the design, teaching, and learning process. Personalization and inclusion will change because the PIT model encourages teachers to design learning environments and use strategies and methodologies that foster <clears throat> the use of ICT, the independent learning, the creativity, the critical thinking, and the acquisition of transferable individual skills and competencies. So <clears throat> now we have finished. Thanks for listening to us. And um, you have a here or a email address if you want to ask us any questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marga.
uh, I uh, I show uh, the uh, if possible to uh, share my computer. Can you exit for you uh, sharing? You should stop your sharing. Beatrix, please. Yeah, sure. Yes. One minute. We're trying to find it. Night. In night in the screen. Uh, I uh, ask to Omero in the next, uh, in the next, uh, thank you, okay. in the next uh, uh, presentation to explain how can we share this app with the classroom is the uh, question in the uh, chat. And I show now uh, the results of uh, the uh, second uh, questionnaire. Uh, we have from Italy, Norway, Spain, uh, in particular from primary school, uh, for the annual design. Uh, this is uh, very important because uh, in different countries we have a different uh, modality to design the annual uh, the curriculum from regional national level, from school level, from class level, and only 9% from individual teacher. But the difference from regional school class is a problem for the debit project because it's very different the modality uh, used in each uh, country. Uh, the second uh, answer is uh, how uh, the relationship from annual curriculum and the uh, micro design. <coughs> And uh, uh, the uh, fifty uh, percent, the annual curriculum provide indication to guide the design of the single working session, and forty-five, the annual curriculum provide general guideline with a small influence on the design and single uh, session. I send now the third. Uh, And, and the last questionnaire, and uh, I invite uh, Paolo to uh, have the next uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you Giuseppe. My name is uh, Paolo Mero. Uh, now I will show you some slides. Um, okay, now you should see my screen. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Perfect. Okay, good morning. My name is Paolo Mero of uh, InfoFactory, um, which is, uh, that is the, the technological company uh, that helped uh, to build this uh, DePit uh, application. Uh, with me in this, uh, in this video conference, uh, there are also Elisa Furlan, who is uh, the person who designed the app, and also Alessio Cionini, who is the main software developer for this app. I will spend just a few words about the, the app and then Alessio will show us uh, the use in a real, uh, real time uh, uh, online demo. Uh, first of all, um, this, mobile, this application is multi platform, so you can use it on different platforms. Uh, there is a desktop application and you can use it on Windows uh, and Trento both, Trent, 32 bits uh, and uh, 64 bits. You can use it on Mac OS and you can also use it. Uh, um, on uh, uh, on Linux, okay. Um, 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 there is also a tablet version, as you can see here in my slide. Um, there is this uh, iOS version you can download from the um, from the, um, the, the the regular App Store from Apple, and you can download also the version for uh, for Android. 
Um, here you can see the, the, the web page uh, where you can download uh, every single version of uh, this app. And um, after uh, you installed it, uh, this is the first uh, main screen of the app. You can uh, log in or you can request a new access. Uh, when, you when you request a new access, uh, well, you, you can type the name of your school in this field here. And if the school is already registered, uh, then you, ha you have to contact uh, your school administrator to log in. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if your school is not re yet registered, uh, then uh, you can add uh, uh, it from uh, yourself and, um, and you can become the administrator of uh, that school. Um, this is the, the aspect of the, this application. So you can build, you have different uh, objects uh, in the editor and you can customize, you can build different maps uh, with different cards, uh, different learning path uh, and different objects like video, uh, audio, uh, text, uh, images, uh, links, uh, and uh, so on. We will, we will show, uh, Alessio will show you later in the demo. And uh, one important thing to keep in mind is that uh, uh, this application is uh, um, structured in three different levels. Uh, you can design uh, a curriculum with uh, different composed by different modules. Uh, each module is uh, made by is made of, of uh, different lesson, and each lesson is made of different uh, real activities you can perform during uh, during your lesson. And you can navigate uh, this structure. You can, uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can navigate among activities. Uh, you can go up uh, of one level and see different lessons, different modules. Uh, and you can see here, you, you have in this tree um, a clear representation of all the structure. So you can move freely and easily with this structure here. And you can recognize also by color, using the color, the type of uh, card, uh, uh, so blue is used for module, purple for lessons, orange for cards, and so on. Um, here in this slide, you can see the, um, the structure of each card. So each card has a name, a title, um, as this learning time and elapsed time, uh, the level of difficulties, uh, um, and you can, uh, you can open each card. And inside each card, you can find uh, a title, a description, uh, several keywords, uh, the learning goals, uh, uh, and also in the activity cards, all the attached file, all the, the learning materials. You can, uh, you, you, if you, you want to be, to, to, to present to, you, to your students. Um, there are a lot of different uh, uh, objects in the editor. So you can add a text uh, or uh, an image, uh, shape, uh, uh, a video, uh, an audio file, a an external link, an internal link between, uh, between maps, uh, and so on. Um, but you can see all this stuff here with, uh, with the demo of my colleague Alessio. So uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for your attention. Now you can, uh, you can uh, give the control of this uh, uh, Roberto. You can, uh, you can make host or you can give the permission to uh, to allow you to share uh, this screen, and so we can uh, we can see an online demo. Well, everybody is able to to share the screen, so it's I think that uh, Alessio should have the the button, the green button, um, in the in the below bar, I guess. Okay. Hey. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Alessio Cianini, the developer of the the pickup. And uh, I will introduce uh, the app with a uh, um, live uh, demonstration in which uh, I will uh, build a simple uh, map structure. Okay, so uh, you can see this is the debit app interface. Uh, our starting point uh, is the My Lesson tab from which uh, uh, we can manage uh, all our contents. And so uh, create a new folder and uh, new maps. So let's begin and create a new map. Okay, we will prompt to choose uh, which card will contain our map. 
As I said before, we have a three uh, level structure. Uh, each layer is uh, defined by a color. Uh, module are defined in blue, uh, lessons in purple. And as you can see later, we have activities in orange. So uh, we will choose for our example, a module map. We create the map. Uh, we can call, uh, for example, uh, geography curriculum, okay, and we open the new map. Now we are in the editor, uh, in the presentation mode, but of course we don't have any content to show, so uh, we had to add uh, some elements to our map. So the first thing to do is to enter the edit mode from the top bar. Okay, and now from the left side of the interface, we have the item bar from which we can choose the elements we want to add to our map and simply drag to our map. We have some common elements like text, shapes, some multimedia objects like image, videos, audios. Uh, document files and also links uh, to uh, web pages or link uh, to uh, other maps from our structure. For example, we can drag uh, an image. We can choose uh, an image from uh, our file. Okay, we added an image and uh, as you can see, we can then uh, freely move in our map and uh, resize it. Okay, but uh, the main element of a map is uh, the card. As we selected before, we have a map of module card, so we can add uh, a module. When we select uh, an item, uh, in the left, we have uh, a contextual menu that uh, allows us to uh, edit the properties of the single element. In this case, we can edit the properties of our card. Okay, we can call it, for example, Europe. We can set a description, for example, European cities. We can set the estimated time for our module, for example, 60 minutes. We can design the layout. By default, it's a full card with both image and text but we can also choose to display only an image on only the text. And we can set other properties, uh, like for example, uh, some uh, keywords uh, and so on. We save and by clicking the info icon in the top left corner of the card, as I said before, we open a pop-up with all the information we defined for our card. Now we can go uh, further with the deeper level of our structure and create a sub-level of uh, lessons. In order to do this, we double click our uh, Europe module card and we choose a map containing lessons. Okay, now we created a sub-map and we can start adding lessons for our Europe module. Uh, we can add, uh, for example, uh, Italy. We can change uh, the image uh, and set the Italian flag. We can add, uh, for example, uh, Spain. And set the flag uh, for this lesson. Another thing we can do with our maps is to link the elements within the map. Uh, in order to do this, we can select an item and build a link between two elements. This link can represent a relationship within two elements, between two elements, or you can design a path uh, between uh, all uh, your contents. Uh, we can also define, uh, for example, 40 minutes uh, for the time of this lesson. And we can now build uh, our uh, third level that will be 
activities uh, displayed in the orange color. Okay. Now uh, we have uh, two different cards, activities and free activities. The first one, activities, for the first one, we can define, as seen before, the duration for our activities. While for the free activity cards, we don't have any time definition. Now we can edit our activities. For example, we can put an image, edit. And we can see now that for activity cards, we have some additional fields of information. For example, the difficulty level, low, medium, or height. Uh, we can call it uh, quiz, set a time of 20 minutes. We can select uh, the type of learning, uh, for example, practice uh, and uh, teaching learning activities. I don't know. Um, and we can also attach uh, some files uh, or links uh, to our activities. When we save the card, as you can see in, in the bottom of the editor, we have now for activity map a bar which uh, uh, will help a teacher to um, define correctly the duration of uh, the activities in this map in relation with the, the total duration of uh, the container lesson. Okay, uh, when you uh, finish the, your work, uh, you can uh, click the button Save and Sync in order to uh, save all your work and synchronize it uh, uh, online. Once your work is saved, it can be retrieved uh, anytime from any other device. Um, now I will introduce also some of the online features of the debit app that will allow teacher to share their materials, their contents with the students of their school or with other teachers. So first of all, we have to open our main structure. Now we will see the publish feature. We can select our map, open its menu and select publish. What we do is browse the, um, the structure of our school. For example, we have a test school with section A, section B and class one and class two. We can select the destination in which our map will be published and confirm. Okay, if we go now in the public lesson tab, we can browse our school structure. And we can find our curriculum in the class two folder. What happened here? Uh, now uh, students of the school with the student's account can have access to our map that is public for this specific folder. So they can follow the lesson directly from their device. And also they can attach their work as for example, document files to the activity cards that you have in, um, in our map. Another way to uh, share uh, your uh, productions is to uh, share your uh, contents uh, with uh, other teachers. To do this, uh, we go back into my lesson uh, tab, select our map and click the share button. Okay, now we can, say, we can select uh, which user we want to share with our map. We can select, for example, the test. And you can select the permission for the sharing the shared map that can be view only, view and copy, and view and modify. With the last option, the other user will be able to uh, modify your own content and so help you constructing your, uh, building your map. You can save. 
Okay, as you can see, we have now two new icons on our map. The first one is for managing the publication, the publishing of our map. And this one is for manage the sharing. So we can change our permission for already shared map. We can revoke them or we can share the map with someone else. Okay, this concludes my brief uh, introduction uh, to the main features of the, the pit app and uh, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you, Alessio. I show uh, the results uh, of the uh, third. Analysis and uh, Okay, the data of the third questionnaire from Spain and Italy, from school and university. Uh, good uh, results, but I would like to show, excuse me, uh, in particular, uh, the uh, um, two, uh, ans two uh, answers. The first, the support of teacher design is uh, see from people uh, uh, much uh, important or much important in debit uh, respect to support in the class and uh, support in the work of a student. Similar and clarification from uh, of the, the relationship from macro and micro design is similar uh, is similar importance to the second answer uh, i would like okay uh, i think uh, now is possible uh, to have the discussion and uh, before i would like to uh, ask a quick comment uh, to diana and uh, joan uh, from sevilla uh, university and from uh, University of uh, Milano. Uh, after we uh, discuss about the question uh, right in the chat. Diana. Um, well, first, I'd very much like to thank everybody who's presented this morning because they've all been really fascinating presentations. Of course, I know the app, having worked on the project, but to hear from all the teachers and the way in which this has been implemented has been really fascinating because it seems to have demonstrated that it is possible to give teachers a much greater sense of empowerment, of um, control, and creativity over the way in which they present and design their lessons. And so one of, uh, but then the other interesting point which came up repeatedly was how this also gives the students themselves a greater sense of ownership of the learning process which they're going through, being able to see that structure, being able to see how each activity fits into it and see how the program moves forward. Um, as if that gives them a sense of responsibility, which they didn't otherwise necessarily have. So I'd be very interested to hear if other people recognize that, um, and if you've seen that in your own applications. Um, and then the other thing which I think um, kept coming through was also the way in which the app has succeeded enabling personalization and inclusivity. Um, <clears throat> because you can think about how you can design different pathways through and you can give different kinds of activities to support um, the various students. And then of course the app offers the opportunity to, for teachers to share with each other. And this is a very different way of teachers being able to work together. Because normally a teacher is, is rather a lone organizer and creator of learning. Um, it's not that easy for teachers to share ideas with each other. A lot happens in staff development sessions or in the, in the staff room. And if you have a team working on a program for students, of course, some schools can organize things that way. But to a great extent, teachers are working much more as individuals when they design the learning process for their students. 
And this, the, there does seem to have been more collaboration going on between the, the teachers in this context of using the app and being able to share with other teachers what they've done. So I'd also like to hear if that sounds like a feasible way forward. You know, do you see that being able to be possible in a way it hasn't been so easy up to now? So all of those three points I'd very much like to hear other people talking about as well. Thank you, Diana. Joan or Mercedes, what do you want? I, Devi attivare il microfono. Da. Now, can you hear me? Okay, Joan. Okay. Good morning. Now. Um, I think uh, that the paid project uh, has been well coordinated and developed with um, estimable results, specifically as in the, the PIT app and the work uh, uh, of teachers. Uh, and I want uh, to emphasize uh, the good relationship between the partners and in the next uh, discussion, the, the, the next uh, point of this meeting, uh, I propose uh, to work uh, about the uh, app uh, DEPIT in the last uh, version uh, and the MOOC. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are uh, uh, two uh, uh, aspects uh, important in the uh, final meeting for discuss uh, today. Thank you. Thank you. A Carenzio from uh, uh, Catholica uh, from Milan University. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Per Giuseppe, thank and you, thanks Alessandra. to all the people uh, connected. Well, I, I really appreciated the presentations today, and uh, I think the three in elements, three issues uh, came out very clearly. Uh, the first uh, is refers to uh, the idea of blended learning and blended teaching. If I, if I consider the situation in this emergency moment, I think that DEPID uh, was a very good help for teachers and for students too and for families. Um, at the moment, a lot of families, man, many families, in, not just in Italy, but in, in a lot of countries, unfortunately, are faced, uh, you know, in something new. A very, a very new issues and a lot of problems. Schools and teachers and, and students uh, who were, I mean, able to work with this technology and this different environment and to set from, from um, normal class, I mean, and, and to, to digital, um, digital teaching and learning uh, had a very, very great help. And we had an informal talk with, with teachers and they all underlined, everybody underlined these this issues and this topic. And I think that the app also as presented today uh, really helps this blended solution, which is more natural because it comes from teachers. And the second issue is very, very close to what Diana uh, just said, and um, the, the possibility to focus on design and to micro learning is a very good help for everybody, for teachers and, uh, and for students too. Um, and I think that if a school um, has a goal, which is to enable, to empower students, I think that this kind of school, this kind of organization, this kind of teachers, of teaching is really a support to, to empower and to be more conscious and to be um, also um, able to, to control uh, learning and, and personal learning processes. And uh, the, last, um, the last idea is that actually um, DEPID uh, enable um, um, to be a community. And this is very important with an emergency or without an emergency. And uh, this is very important because um, this is not just um, curriculum. This is, uh, you know, uh, a topic of, uh, of, uh, of developing um, personality and developing a relationship with everybody. So Debbie is not just a, a teaching app, a teaching and learning app. There's something that goes behind 
uh, teaching and learning. And this is really important and teachers really understood this. So uh, thanks for all this experience. Thanks for this um, also um, um, possibility to, to share things. And really I appreciated the three years because uh, it's not just an app is a, um, a sort of uh, idea of what school teaching and learning should be now and also in the future, considering the next year. So thanks. Thanks, Alessandra. Thank I, I repeat, the, I propose the question from the chat to single uh, teacher. For Federica, were your students able to interact online with their work successfully? Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, well, actually, uh, I had uh, used the app uh, and all my kids uh, were able to use it, uh, most of them by themselves, because they were already used to it uh, as we were using it in the class uh, during our usual lessons in presence. This one was the good thing. Uh, they were not that much interactive at the very beginning of this emergency, I must admit. Um, so if your question is if uh, they were sending me back uh, their paperwork uh, on the debit app, I must admit uh, no at that moment. Uh, also because uh, we were uh, um, using other app uh, to have uh, lessons uh, in presence uh, on web. Uh, so most of the time we were discussing about their production using conferences, right? <clears throat> but the good point of the app was uh, that uh, they could use it uh, also offline and we did not lose the path uh, on which we were working on together. And that was the biggest part. Uh, they have not, well, they lose uh, uh, the opportunity to go out with friends, uh, to meet in the classroom with us in the morning, uh, to catch our smiles and hugs in presence, but they did not uh, miss uh, the general path uh, and they could still understand where we were going, even if we were not in the class anymore. And that uh, for me was an important thing. Factory, are you using the app as an alternative to other digital tools for education, example, classroom or combination? Well, I'm using like a combination. At the very beginning, I was using just app debit. And then, uh, as you can imagine, my school, and we are an active school also here in Italy, uh, decided to use Google Classroom for using Meet, basically. Uh, that was uh, uh, the tool that gave us the opportunity to be online with the kids, uh, sharing with them some ideas in presence. So I have used both combined because uh, uh, the most relevant thing, in my opinion, is this one. If you know how, for example, Google Classroom works, uh, you know that what you are posting it uh, disappear going down. It's like Facebook. Then if you have to find something, you have just to remember the date and go down and try to have a look and connect things. Instead of that bit, there is, you know, a sort of net, the net that I was talking in my presentation before. There is a system that you always uh, uh, can see that is visible and in which you can jump from here now to yesterday to the day after, which is really good. You are not going to lose information on it. So I have used a combination of the different kind of tools that you can find online, actually. Thank you. And Omero, what do you think about the combination? Paolo? Oh, ma, uh, well, uh, the, the combination could be, uh, could be done, actually, because, you know, there, is a, uh, there are different methods uh, and, and both available. So you can use uh, conferencing for uh, real-time interaction, and you can say the app, and you can use the app 
in order to maintain uh, the structure of the learning path uh, always visible and uh, uh, for the students and also for teachers. Uh, the, uh, if you uh, can uh, read the last uh, questions. In fact, we were wondering about if it is possible to improve a version of David to be included in G Suite as a third party application. Uh, it's clear, it's difficult to respond uh, yeah. directly, um, but what do you think? Um, yes, it's difficult uh, just because uh, uh, I don't know exactly uh, what does it mean to be included. Okay, so uh, we um, for sure could use, uh, explore and use uh, the API provided by G Suite uh, or other tools like uh, uh, Google Drive or, or, or Dropbox or other tools in order to, to build some kind of integration. Uh, for example, we, we talked about it yesterday and um, we, we were figuring out uh, if uh, it's possible to build a, a link uh, and connect uh, uh, specific uh, maps, uh, edit tables or not, or just visible, in order to, uh, to, to, um, uh, to make them uh, visible inside the G Suite, for example. So you, you could mix uh, slides and also link uh, uh, to, to maps. Uh, but we have to explore it. Uh, um, I'm curious to, to hear about, uh, to hear from, from teachers, uh, what uh, kind of uh, integration they have in mind. Yes, I think uh, uh, this the discussion is uh, uh, begin now, but I ask you uh, in the last day about this. And I think in the future, we think about the possibility to integration because uh, from the uh, project start uh, in three years ago and now it's changed in particular the integration the role in Italy of reg uh, register electronic electronic uh, uh, tool uh, for the uh, registration of uh, lesson activities and it's important to understand how to change the uh, the, uh, bisogni, the need of a, of a teacher. I, uh, the second, uh, uh, the third answer is for Giuseppina. It was good to hear that you found that this an efficient way to work with other teachers. Was it difficult to persuade them to work with the app in the way you did? Giuseppina? Can you hear me? Okay. okay. As I said, um, Laura, before we have a we are a group of uh, of teachers from different school, uh, and our rate crescendo is a very good Italian reality. Rich opportunities for sharing proposal. Uh, we use different platforms, Meet, G Suite, with Classroom. The use of a debit app is very important for the cognitive path of students of different schools in the territory. We have we shared work between us. We are a small group, but a small group from different schools. We are four schools together, and we we are a very collaborative group, and we have worked together very well. Thank you. I Sorry for, for interrupting. I, I also saw that then Diana was uh, wondering if uh, the students became happier with working this way. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I, yes, I think so. Yes, uh, all my all my colleagues uh, told me that uh, it was a success uh, working with the app with the students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Results was uh, were very positive. Thank Luca, you. se vuoi aggiungere tu qualcosa? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, the students uh, uh, react very well to the app, uh, both in classroom and uh, at home. Uh, they found that this kind of uh, visualiz visualization was very attractive from uh, one point of view. And uh, it was uh, mm, uh, very good for uh, understanding the, pro the learning process. So uh, they found it like a, they mm, 
view it like a game, but everything they do uh, was uh, learned. And uh, it's very interesting, this approach. Federica, do I, uh, what you want to uh, say about this, yes, this very um, important uh, uh, element? Yeah, uh, one just, uh, if I can say a couple of things. Uh, the first one is that actually about cooperation between teachers. I think that this app give us, uh, allow us uh, to collaborate even if uh, we are not in class or far away. Actually, we can work on the same map, uh, on the same path, uh, even if uh, we are in two different places. Uh, and we can see and add uh, resources uh, working with different ends on the same uh, structure, which is really great actually, in my opinion, because that uh, allows us also to coordinate with the teacher that are working with kids with special needs. This is the first thing. The second thing is about students. Well, as I, I told you before, my students are um, younger. <laughs> I mean that they are eight years old actually. And uh, they, have, uh, they are grown actually with these uh, app because we started the first class uh, while we were starting the project and they have started to appreciate it uh, because it is easy to understand uh, and because inside that uh, actually we like teacher but also they like uh, kids can find different kind of resources that are well organized and the structure is flexible no one has also um, told in this morning that we are using this, the same app with kids young and older, and it works anyhow with all these people. That means that is really a flexible app. And we can say that we are using technologies for educational path, but technology is not using us. I mean, we can manage this kind of technologies. And uh, in fact, if you are looking at the different teachers, you will look at a different kind of organization because we can uh, be flexible thinking about uh, the age of our students, the way of learning, and also what we want to uh, um, pass to them. You know, uh, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you. I saw that Diana raised her hand. Maybe she would like to comment something, please, Diana. Um, <clears throat> yes, well, I, I found those were <clears throat> all extremely interesting responses again. And just briefly wanted to refer to David's um, point about blended learning. I, I, I don't know if you were going to come to that, Pia Giuseppe, but um, that I think is going to be a very important change because this has forced us into using online and so many people have discovered that there are some important benefits to it and there are some quite creative and fun things that one can do. So I think we won't go back to pre-COVID as you were suggesting might be possible. I think um, there will be um, the opportunity to bring much more blended learning in. So being able to see the kind of experience that teachers have had um, with the app and the way in which the, the app so well supports what they want to do is very important. And the, the testimony that you have about teachers being able to work together and to be able to share is surely that's a very different way of teachers working on pedagogy, which has not really happened before. And if they do move beyond, you know, their own sort of private um, practice to working in groups, and as um, Giuseppina was suggesting that you work actually across schools as well, then the teaching community will become like, more like the academic community of sharing ideas and building knowledge together. So that we all discover, because we're at the very early stages, honestly, of understanding how learning technology really can work optimally. So we need this huge force of creativity and innovation and experience that the teaching community brings. But apps like this are being able to bring that together and um, uh, enable teachers to act as um, a community that's building knowledge about pedagogy. So 
I, I think this um, is a very exciting moment. And I want to just thank you for your, the, what you've been doing with it, you know, over these years that, that the project has been working. And it's fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Alessandra, would you like to uh, follow uh, yes, please. With, uh, um, thank with... you. Uh, just want to add a word on blended. Uh, because I think that blended is not just a mix of uh, online and offline, you know, it's not just a, a mix of um, digital and analog. I think the blended and the deputy are showed us very clearly, uh, blended is a mix of activities of practice, of stimuli. So this is very important. I think that teachers uh, really started to uh, consider this, um, this idea of blended because with the app, teachers are very more um, able to define what they are doing. Uh, am I doing a lot of reading or a lot of analysis or a lot of doing and, and making with my students, uh, considering the, the conversational framework and all the, the, the ideas that the framework gave us during these three years. So I think that for sure blended as a mix of online and, and offline of, of, uh, of, of you know, school as, as, as it is with bricks, but also as, as school or community, but also and especially. Uh, blended is a mix of methods, and this is very important also for the for schools and teachers uh, for the next uh, for the next years. Uh, you know, after the COVID emergency. Yeah. Good point. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if there are more comments about it. Uh, I think this is a very interesting topic to discuss about, um, also because as we. As we know very well, things have changed a lot during these last uh, three months. And uh, personally, I also found uh, the one of the questions very interesting. Uh, it, it was made by Davide Orlandini. I don't know if uh, he wants to, to, to show up, but uh, he's, he's asking if uh, the, the presence uh, teaching or the teaching presence will be redefined or after all, we will go back to the traditional classroom as if nothing happened. I think this is a very interesting topic to, to discuss. I think it's impossible to return and to do the precedent activities. I think uh, the COVID uh, allow to the um, emergence, presence, uh, to the, the need the present in the school to explode and uh, uh, allow to the teacher to see the importance about uh, uh, not, on, not only the technology, but about the, uh, a different uh, integration from formal and non-formal and informal education. Uh, uh, in this period, many people said that the activities is uh, authentic activities in the house, is real activities, and this possibility to connect with uh, it is. And I think the importance of a technology to support these different relationship from uh, formal activities, non-formal, what in uh, uh, school happen and uh, what uh, what is the life of the student in all uh, uh, your uh, journey your, uh, day uh, I think uh, I think this but this uh, element is present before and now is uh, uh, people uh, hear the uh, the problems and the possibility to solve this problem. Thank you very much. I don't know if anybody else would like to add something. This is, um, I think, uh, this is something that, of course, we didn't know about when uh, when we started our work uh, uh, three almost three years ago, and but we realized that uh, these uh, these the results are really actual, really important uh, right now. By the way, I 
knew from our uh, friends from Sevilla that uh, they had uh, prepared another short questionnaire regarding their presentation. So I don't know, Beatrice, if you want uh, to, to share the link for the participants uh, here in the chat, feel free to do it. We have uh, another uh, question. Another question, yeah. Right. And if uh, you want to answer, Federica, it's okay. Oh, uh, just a second. As I see that uh, a person asked us uh, how we can uh, share this app with the students. Well, actually, I can say how I did. Um, I just uh, uh, organized uh, one username and one password that I gave to all the families uh, of the students of my class. Uh, they just need to download the app, which is for free, on their device. And then they just have to tape the username and the password, and that's it. This is a way. Actually, I know that with the students that are a little bit older than mine, uh, you can also create an account for each student, uh, which is always for free, and it's easy. Uh, one thing uh, that... Uh, in my opinion is important uh, that uh, teachers can use the app. So when you register like teacher to create your own account, uh, they will ask you from which school or organization in educational um, world you are in. No, each uh, I answer to uh, uh, two question. You have an answer of password? No. Uh, each, each teacher have a one password username and uh, uh, the students have another password username, but is the same for all students of the same class. And the student can read and insert materials about our activities. Uh, when final uh, uh, the, uh, map change during the action and uh, 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 in the uh, map, we have uh, not only the design of a teacher, material of a teacher, but also the results of activities and uh, uh, improve during the activities. Okay. Other question? Um, I did have another question. Roberto, is that okay? Please, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to come back on um, the informal versus formal education point that Pierre Giuseppe was referring to, and also to bring in parents because parents have yes. been mentioned once or twice. And especially when we have, um, well, over this current period, of course, parents have been deeply involved in education. And it's been a nice opportunity for them to discover how wonderful teachers are and how difficult teaching is, which has been um, very good for teachers, I think. Um, but it has been, it has shown that um, we can bring parents closer into the classroom in a way by having something like online learning. And the app does indeed allow that. And that's another thing that we could hope will persist. Um, but there is a difference between formal learning and informal learning, which is why informal learning is so important and understanding the relationship between them is important. But they are importantly different. Informal learning is where the learner is in charge, wholly in charge. It's their curriculum. It's they decide what activities they're going to um, engage in. They decide who they do it with and why and whether this counts as doing it well or not. And I'm not sure that school should interfere with that. I think it's great that we can reach into the home and contextualize what we're teaching about. And you can relate the, um, I don't know, fractions game or something to something you can actually do in the home with um, food or sharing or whatever. And contextualizing what we do in formal education is important. But for school to be trying to organize in any way what happens in informal learning, I'm not so sure about. And I just wanted to raise that as a, another open question, perhaps. Maybe it's too controversial for the last two minutes of the conference. But... 
an interesting thing to think about. Um, may I think just a word? Uh, um, I, I think you're right. There is something, uh, this is a topic on which we can uh, spend some time to think about it. Um, what I can say is that uh, uh, during this uh, uh, lockdown, uh, I have tried uh, um, to give to my students uh, using also the app uh, uh, some informal uh, ways of learning. Like for example, I asked them to help mom and dad uh, at home because they were all closed in the same flat. Uh, for example, cooking and then to send me the recipe so I will exchange with them my recipe and stuff like that. And uh, this part was a funny part because all the families and parents are playing this game with their kids. Mm. Uh, I mean that uh, this kind of a situation and suggestion then uh, um, At, uh, I'm not hearing. At the net is blocked. We can't hear anymore, Federica. Uh, Federica. In this Echo. Series, uh, Can you repeat? Uh, is uh, blocked the oh, net? Oh, sorry. Can you? Yes, I can. Can you repeat? No. I think you have an unstable connection at this moment, Federica. Okay. okay. Ecco, adesso sembra che vada meglio, vai. Okay. So I was thinking that for the parents was Purtroppo uh, I problem problem with the net. If you if you But, have things, you can please type your Yes, your uh, comment it was, here. Yeah, it, it was a very, it was a very interesting point that, yeah, was. <laughs> that Federico was making, and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to interfere with anything like that. It was fantastic what she was doing with 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 the um, with the students at home. Yes, I think that's great, and 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 that's how online learning can reach into the home, and the home can engage with the school. So, I think this is one of the great benefits of blended learning of the kind that we're talking about. I think uh, uh, many work uh, uh, do in this period is uh, authentic because uh, uh, people can try and uh, resolve a situation. Uh, people don't have the same material to do the uh, task of the school and uh, created or uh, research uh, normal uh, think about to uh, create it. Uh, I think uh, I uh, uh, I say that with many teachers in this period and many people, many teachers said it's changed the relationship from school and parents uh, because uh, uh, parents uh, have uh, um, perception and able to uh, is uh, understand the uh, problems of the uh, learning and uh, uh, support in different uh, way uh, the activities. But in particular, in pre-primary pre, pre school, the role of a teacher is not only with, with uh, uh, students, with the children, but, child, but in particular with parents and to support uh, also how to uh, hear uh, the soon and uh, understand the problem the problem uh, um, uh, meet in the uh, in the learning part it's very interesting the change of the relationship from parent and the teacher in this period mm -hmm. in the uh, in the chat okay I see there are other comments uh, from uh, Federica again and from Alessandra that this kind of uh, oh, 
practical activities was really um, liked by 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 parents and by by family. Uh, but I agree also with what uh, um, Irina is saying about uh, the importance uh, of uh, uh, carefully designed learning activities. Uh, so uh, this is an interesting discussion. Of course, uh, we are free to to go on. We don't have any 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 time limit, even if our agenda said twelve. So. If you are happy to, to go on for another five minutes to discuss about it, feel free to do it. If there are other contribution, of course. I ask to people, in particular to teacher, to answer the uh, question in the chat, if you want. Federica, Elena, Luca, Marga, Beatrix, uh, Giuseppina, and all other people. I see other other uh, teacher uh, present in the chat. If you want uh, uh, intervene, it's possible to. Uh, okay. Federica, non te lo dico. Ok? Sorry, I didn't get what you said. Dimmi. No, se volete, se vuoi rispondere alle domande. Uh, leggo un attimo, sto leggendo. <laughs> Vedo anche altri, if uh, we have also other teachers, Giuseppina, Beatrice, Elena, Alice... Uh, well, about the publication, I think you can answer about that uh, because there is a question in which they are asking if there are any publication available about the experiences, other findings about the use of the debit app. So maybe you should answer to this question if you like. I think that I, I answered already. Um, and But I can repeat it, of course. Um, we will publish all our uh, results uh, in the in the debit website uh, we have already some interesting publication the first one regarding the how the um, the first training was carried out with teachers and uh, school students and then we had a second one with university students uh, but uh, we we are working on the final editing of these uh, two reports. But uh, you will find all of them in the in the website soon. What are you doing, you silly cats? Okay. I. Vai, Roberto, chiudi. Uh, just let me remind uh, that uh, uh, we will meet again uh, for the second uh, part of this of this conference of online conference on Friday this week, 29th of May at four from four to six uh, Central Europe time, and uh, we will um, have the, the the participation of international uh, expert. One uh, is Enilda, Professor Enilda Romero Hall from University of Tampa in Florida in, uh, in the US. And the other is Pekka Rosanen of University from uh, um, Givascula in, uh, in Finland and Maria Ranieri from University of Florence. And then with a round table chaired by Lorella Gianandrea from University of Macerata and of course all the partners of the DEPIT project. I think it will be a great opportunity to share once again our results and to comment about uh, our DEPIT app. So please uh, uh, save the date and let's meet uh, later this week. Uh, 
Well, what else? Uh, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, uh, we are very happy to, to have you here. Uh, and we are also happy about the results. I think it was a very interesting discussion. Thanks to all the teachers. Thanks to all the experts that join us today. And thanks, of course, to all the, the speakers. Thanks, Diana. It, it was nice to meet you again. <laughs> nice. And um, thanks to, to, to all the partners. As I said in the beginning, it was a pity that we couldn't do it uh in a face in a face-to-face -face, uh, format but uh, it was nice as well if you don't have any other comments i would like to say uh, goodbye and uh, see you very very soon thank, thank you to all thank, thank you roberto thank bye. you so much thank you bye Bye-bye.